Hi Dragonflies, welcome back to Dragonfly Spirit Studio. I'm Lynn Bauer. Well, this is it. This is the video where you get to see and hear what happened when I tried to execute this design and plan that we've been coming up with over the last several videos for a painting inspired by a photo of a lighthouse that's not a copy of the photo at all. And I'm saying see and hear what happened because I kind of want to remind us all this is not a paint-along sequence. By the end of this video, I think you'll be really glad it's not a paint-along. So don't write to ask me about technical details. That's not where my attention was, and that's not where you want to put your attention in this video either. Try to take a step back and look at the overall process, see where I ran into problems, what I had to do to get myself out of those problems, and how we finally get to a reasonably successful execution of this painting and not the individual technical details. So let's quickly refresh our memories where we were. This was the design that we were working on and we started by trying to come up with a painting plan based on those default settings for what order to do things in watercolor. So in any given area we want to do light areas first and layer darks on top soft edged shapes first and layer hard edged shapes on top, big shapes, then smaller shapes, and typically background and maybe foreground and then the middle ground layered on top. So we started by asking, well, what if we just try to use these default choices and paint the sky and the water first soft and wet into wet? We did identify a few areas where we thought we might have to mask some lights and then do a first layer, something like this, where we would paint down to that horizon line and the tops of the trees wet into wet, and leave a soft edge, and then pick up again with the water and drop in some darker swooshes of color for those wave shapes. And then when that's dry, we could come back and add a somewhat darker layer of smaller shapes on the island and in the reflections, and then some even smaller, darker shapes to kind of finish things off. But then we looked at it in color again and we realized that there are a lot of small soft edged shapes at the tops of the trees where we had complementary colors right next to each other. So in the last video we investigated a variety of different ways we might preserve those soft edges. None of them really satisfied me but I decided I would use the method of masking the sunlit sides of the trees and the lighthouse and tried to make the trees that were a little more in shadow as soft edged as I could as I was laying my wash. So I have a painting plan, but I'm pretty unsure of this painting plan at this point. But I don't know that testing things is going to help me very much because the thing I'm concerned about is this big sky wash. Laying this wash and trying to get it even enough, get the graduated wash going and still paint around those edges that aren't masked and make them look soft, I'm not sure I can pull this off. And honestly, it's feeling pretty frantic. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can keep this wash going and work around these tree shapes and kind of create a soft edge. As you can see, the wash wound up being pretty streaky. That's gonna be okay because I pre-wet the page so I'll be able to even it out um, using gravity, but it still felt pretty frantic. All right, so while that wash dries, I want to go back to a point that I mentioned briefly in an earlier video. A number of people had written in to say to me, you know, I can see where this would be very beneficial if I could just force myself to sit down and do this kind of careful planning ahead of time, but I just don't have the discipline. This is not for me. And I mentioned in that video that I also don't normally do all that planning. I just want to jump in and start painting. And I also used to think that that was lack of discipline or just laziness, and maybe it is. But if it is, I think it has a lot of wisdom in it for us as watercolorists. I think it's actually a better way to work. So let me explain. I put things into kind of a nice idealized narrative so that you could see the whole process before we started working on the painting, but I don't use it that way in my studio. 
And I don't think it's all because of laziness. In watercolor, there are certain things that you simply can't assess until you try them at the scale of the painting that you're trying to attempt. So this big wash that we just laid, in all those little test samples we did about how to handle the edge between the trees and the sky, I still could not answer the question of, could I do whatever I was doing there and pull off laying a big graduated wash at the same time? And there's no way I'm ever gonna answer that question until I jump in and try it. So maybe it's actually wiser to plan just enough or until we encounter a question that we can only answer by starting the painting and then go back and do a bit more planning and a bit more painting. And this is how I normally work. I do all the planning stages, but I don't necessarily do all of them ahead of time. In many cases, I'm not even sure what I want to do ahead of time, and I need to start painting to discover that. So if you're finding yourself kind of resisting doing all of that careful planning ahead of time before you jump in, that might just be your own watercolor wisdom speaking to you. There's a deeper reason why I think that that's wise for us at watercolor, as watercolorists, and that is watercolor gives us these unexpected gifts sometimes. Sometimes something happens on the page that you could never imagine or never make happen in a million years. And I want to be able to reserve the right to go back and say, you know what? This doesn't fit with the design I was trying to develop, but it's so fabulous. I want to change my design and change my plan to take advantage of this gift that watercolor has given me. And maybe I'll go work on that other design again some other time, but at each point, I want to be flexible enough to say, what have I been given at this point? What should I do from here? Should I continue with the same plan on this piece of paper? Should I continue with the same plan, but take a fresh sheet of paper and do another draft? Should I change my design, change my plan, change my concept to take advantage of something here or to get around a problem that I think I can't solve? So if you've been feeling like you're resisting some of this design and planning stuff, bring it in a little at a time, wherever it seems to help you. Don't force yourself to do all of it ahead of time. I'm not sure that's wise, even if you did have the discipline to pull that off. So at this point, we're not at a point where we have to make any changes yet, although I'm a little concerned about the fact that I don't think the sky is dark enough. I think I'm going to have to lay another wash on top of this to darken it. But for now, I'm going to proceed with the water and see if maybe I change my view of that once I get all of that white covered. So let's drive on, but we're going to keep in the back of our mind the option that we might decide to start another draft. So as I'm proceeding with my plan, working on the water next, I'm seeing a problem with the plan, trying to put in these reflections of something that isn't painted yet, that I don't have the object that's being reflected, is kind of a challenge. I'm going to continue with this and hope that it works out, but if I do have to do another draft, I'm making a mental note that I think I will change the painting sequence to deal with that problem. Now that the water is dry, I'm removing some masking fluid that I didn't mention earlier. This is a place where I decided to change the design kind of on the fly. I wanted some highlights in the water in the foreground. It's going to turn out to be a problem that grows in future drafts and you'll see how that unfolds. For now, it's not too much of a problem. And then we need to go ahead and paint our island, finish the island. As I'm finishing up the island, I start to fiddle with tiny details. And this is something that I think, uh, as watercolorists, we tend to talk about like it's a moral failing. But I've learned for myself that when I start fiddling like this, what's usually going on is there is a bigger problem somewhere else in the painting that I don't know what to do about. In this case, I don't have the sense of light that I would like at the horizon. And I know it's because both the sky and the water don't get dark enough as they move away from the horizon, but I'm not sure I can do another wash on top and pull it off. I really have nothing to lose. I may as well go ahead and try another wash on the sky and the water to 
darken up the outer portions, except that I'm not really happy with the island either, so I decide instead to start a new draft. Before I start the next draft, I want to take a moment to ask myself what's working and what's not. And not just in the sense of what do I like and what do I not like on this piece of paper, but also what went well and what might need some adjustment about my design, my plan for how to execute the painting, and the execution itself. So what's actually working best for me in this draft is the little highlights I put in the water and the reflections. I kind of like that corner. So I decide to keep that, except I'm not sure I like the direction of movement there, so I'm going to make some changes to that. And what isn't working is mostly what I knew was going to be tough, and that's that sky wash. And then not getting the color I wanted in the island is just a silly mistake. I didn't test my colors before I started working. So I decide that I'm going to keep the painting plan that I had, the plan for execution, pretty much the same as it was. I hope I can pull off a better wash in the sky and actually test my colors on the island. And then make a few more adjustments on the fly to the design to change the direction of those highlights and maybe make some color changes. In this next draft, I managed to get the colors a little more like what I want on the island, but I still run into the same problem with the sky wash and the water. I, at this point, seem to still have a little bit more light at the horizon, but that's really only because I haven't put in my reflections of the island itself. So I decide to stop <laughs> this draft, not proceed any further, take a step back and ask, okay, now what? I made a number of changes, but none of them really increased my chances of success. So these little adjustments to the foreground water, color changes, paying more attention as I paint the island, that's all very well and good, but really it doesn't address the big problem that I'm facing with this design and plan, and that's getting that sky wash right. And the sky wash is pretty important to this design. I'm already using every trick I know about how I'm applying the paint to the paper. But when you're thinking about your painting plan, sometimes you need to think about more than just the part of applying the paint to the paper. Zoom out just a little bit and think about the whole process of doing the painting. So one thing that I'm aware of as I was laying those first, first two washes is I'm working in the setup I use for Zoom classes as well as YouTube. So there are a lot of cameras and microphones and other electronics right outside of the frame here. It's a pretty cramped working space. And in particular, I can't really stand up in this space and work because to see what's going on on the page, my head has to kind of go where all the cameras and microphones are. So before I start the next draft, I'm going to set up another camera in another location where it's just that one camera and not so much right around me where I can stand up and move a little bit more. Now, you might not have camera equipment all around you, but simply doing something like saying, I'm going to move to a space where I can stand up. I'm going to do this wash on a bigger table where I can move around a little bit. Any little edge I can give myself. All of that stuff is part of your painting plan as well. So don't forget to think about changes like that as well as just how am I going to put the paint on the paper as part of your painting plan. So I'm going to give this another shot in a more relaxed environment and see if that helps. So the verdict is, yes, by standing up and being able to move a little more, I'm able to handle that sky wash a little better. Uh, looking at it with the right values, I'm now thinking the color changes are a little ill-advised. I don't like this really oversaturated version, so I think I'll go back to the original color scheme, but at least now I feel like I have a method that works for laying that sky wash. And oh boy, I should have just gone back to the original color scheme and my original design now that I had a way to pull it off and just done the painting the way that it was originally planned. But no, I went off on a tangent. I'm going to show you this tangent just because I think this is something that also happens to a lot of us. 
I realize as I'm doing this that now that I've solved the problem with the sky wash, I'm really not all that excited about the design. It's kind of boring to me. So I decide to jazz it up a little bit with some more variation in the sky and the water. So I went off and did one, two, three more drafts adding more and more complexity to the sky and the water in each one. And I'm not really satisfied yet, but I'm liking the direction this is going. At this point, this draft feels like it has a lot of potential to be a nice painting, but it doesn't feel quite finished yet. And the question is, what does it need to feel finished? Well, unfortunately, what it needs is a clear focal point, and it's not really clear what this painting is about anymore. Is it about the lighthouse? If so, why is there so much attention on the foreground? This is a setup for overworking a painting. If I try to make the water and the lighthouse and the sky equally important, what will happen is I'll basically just overwork the painting without ever really bringing it to a successful conclusion. There's nothing really wrong with letting a design evolve like this as long as I recognize what's happened and pause here and ask myself, how do I want to finish this design? Maybe to go back to that design stage and do a little more thinking instead of just mindlessly developing each piece equally and overworking the painting without actually bringing it to a successful conclusion. So the point I'm trying to make is not don't go off on tangents. I like where this tangent is going and I often work this way. I start with a design that's what I sort of think I want to do and as I'm painting I learn more about what I really want this painting to be and the design evolves. The point that I'm making is when you recognize that the design has really changed to a new design and not just a minor variation, it's a good idea to pause and revisit your design and plan and make sure that you still have a clear idea of how this new design is going to be completed. A painting is going to have more impact if it has one clear focus and everything else is at least a little bit subordinate. In this case, I'm not even sure what I want the focus to be, so I'm going to set that tangent off to the side for a little bit and think about it some more. So the tangent gives me an idea for another painting, and as a result of going off on this tangent, I discovered a small change that I do want to make to the original design, and that is I would still like to have some small highlights in the water to help lead your eye to the lighthouse. And so I've added that little change. I'm going to take what I learned about laying that wash standing up and with everything all ready to go and see if I can go back to my original design and bring that painting to a successful completion.
So here we are with, I think it's draft number six, and I'm pretty content with this. I think I'm going to call that the final draft. I feel like it's a pretty good expression of the design that we came up with and captures some of the feel that I wanted to capture of that late evening uh, by the lighthouse. And six drafts might sound like a lot, but remember, they're not all brought to completion. Several of them only had a couple of washes on them before I said, nope, I need to start on a fresh sheet of paper. And those pieces of paper will get used for learning and experiments. And then the three where I went off on the tangent led to an interesting new idea for another painting and to the small adjustment of adding these little sparkles in the water to help lead your eye to the lighthouse that I think made this design even better. So if you struggle with that very intellectual planning process, maybe try working in drafts like this and see if that suits you better or some mixture of the two. I hope you have fun with it and I'll see you next time. Happy painting.